Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Ben Henshaw, who's the Regional Vice President and General Manager for Australia and New Zealand at Denota. We last spoke to Denota in 2020 about the company's growth and data virtualization space. And today, Ben joins us to discuss the evolution of data maturity and other new updates that have occurred in the company. Great to have you along again, Ben, and welcome to the jam. Nice to meet you, Mitchell. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So um, since we last spoke in 2020, a lot's happened. Uh, can you start by explaining how data maturity has evolved over the past 18 months? Yeah, look, it's a great question, Mitch, because um, the um, increase in demand on data-driven decision-making across pretty much every enterprise and government institution has been at the forefront of you know, boards and CEOs and general managers' requirements, given obviously what we all are aware of in the last two years that's driven people to work remotely and make decisions uh, where they're physically isolated. So the maturity of that, um, I think, is really important to understand that the terms of that are things like, do I have access to the data? Can I trust the data? How timely is it? Does it help or dilute the decision-making or the role that I'm doing? And really, really, as the, the next wave of this is, can I innovate and answer questions about my role or what I'm trying to do in a much more exploratory and self-service way? And I'd say in the last you know, two years, 18 months, that that is still really the, the enigma of this whole move towards data-driven decision-making that still, I think, eludes you know, a large portion of businesses. You can always find pockets where they're doing it in a much more mature way versus others, but that, that ability to answer questions that we don't know yet or we want to explore, but because we don't have the data, it's not timely, we don't trust it. That is really, really a frustrating and, and a fractious thing that organisations have with their maturity of data. Awesome. And what would you say is driving this change? Is the pandemic um, still in business conditions or have we kind of moved on from that? Oh, look, I think it's it's distinct for each industry and each sector. I, I would be uh, disingenuous for me if I said it's the same for every sector, um, you know, particularly organisations that have, have been more digitally oriented, like, for instance, banking, you know, they, they've already been uh, through that, that, that phase of digitisation over the last decade. But then when you talk about um, operational technology and the convergence with, with IT and mining and heavy machinery and then health services and those sorts of things, you know, they've certainly been catapulted into making data a front center first class citizen in their strategies to support things around pre post uh, pandemic operational um, conditions. So, um, you know, a real classic one of that is supply chain. We're all seeing that the constraints on that, and that is a hugely interdependent data driven problem space, uh, along with obviously just also geopolitical issues and uh, what labor workforce issues, but data is in incredibly important in trying to optimize and make resilient um, you know, decisions about how you support and improve supply chain. And do you think companies across our region uh, have a kind of good understanding of data virtualization? And how does this differ from other platforms and services? Yeah, look, it's, 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 a, it's a very interesting question, at least from Donato's perspective. So it is a little bit inward focusing because we're obviously a data virtualization or a data integration management delivery software vendor. So we're asking ourselves that question, you know, constantly about um, the level of knowledge and awareness about this uh, product space or, or platform space. But I'd say it's certainly um, you could it, you could generally categorize into three areas. And one is that you've got really forward leaning organizations that understand the unique approach to data integration, management and delivery through the principles of data virtualization as a way to accelerate that. Now, we call that time to information and time to decisioning. Um, the second is organizations or, or departments that still what I would have a slightly um, retrospective view of data management through the realms of data consolidation, um, through what we would call like a lake or a warehouse or, or some sort of cloud migration. And the view is if you can consolidate that and then um, try and do your queries off that, um, and, and through a, a model called federated queries, um, which is an old term for data virtualization, organizations are thinking about it in that realm. And that's a little bit more old school, which is not really the, the correct way to, to view that. And then you have organizations that are, are really taking on board the um, analyst information coming out of Forrester and Gartner, particularly around data fabrics 
and then this next evolution called data meshes and their research is pointing towards data virtualization as a uh, part of the, the uh, a part of the critical path to enabling a data fabric and a data mesh organizational and technological capability for data management data creation data services data delivery and data governance so th they would be sort of the three main ways I'd categorize the market in understanding uh, the roles of data virtualization. Absolutely. Lots of big changes occurring there. Yeah, um, there is. Yeah. And uh, what areas of industries are you seeing the most growth uh, for Donodo at the moment? You know, I, I, um, having come from my previous uh, organization that I worked at for 13 years, where roughly, you know, 60% of the business came from three sectors, which was finance, telco and government, Donodo is almost like a ubiquitous data management, data delivery platform that is in every major industry. So it's not any industry in particular that is um, taking a larger slice of our business. So, um, you know, there's great banking examples and insurance, education, health and, health and hospitals government in pretty much most sectors, stats, finance, treasury, um, human services, um, border security, logistics and transportation is there, life sciences, machinery, heavy, heavy uh, machinery, um, mining and resources, manufacturing is very, very strong, retail, energy, and then obviously um, um, things like, um, yeah, I think uh, transportation and logistics is, is, is a really one that's, that's taking a lot of interest at this point in time. So it's it's really across the board. I couldn't say it's one one versus the other because data is a, a driving change of organizational uh, improvement, productivity, cost savings, you know, preemptive uh, aspects of, of resilience um, and organizational change. It really is. So it's, it's across the board. And what's next on the agenda? Are there any exciting kind of developments coming up or new solutions or events? Um, yeah, look, there's, there's, there's three main things that um, Donodo are heavily focusing on. Um, the first is around continuing to improve the way data is managed and governed. Um, so governance is a huge, huge area that organisations are investing a lot of time and energy in people and resource. So there's lots of terms called data stewards, data governance, data um, um, management roles that chief data officers and officers of data are investing a lot in people to try and have some better management of how data is collated, overseen, curated and delivered, but in what we would call business context language. Now, anybody who's done anything with data, um, you know, knows that they've had a fractious relationship with trying to use it because they can't read it properly. And that's where it's data stewards and data governance comes in. And then there's things like policies and compliance and regulation that is added to that, both internally and externally. So Donodo is spending a lot of time further enriching the ability to do better governance, data governance, with what's called tagging and semantic tagging of data that is usable and readable and searchable by business people so they can make better decisions and use data in their way. Um, the second is around really improving the way, and we, we've done this for quite some time, but it's just further adding icing on the cake of improving data migration to clouds. So Donodo has always been a great platform for cloud migration and cloud interoperability of non-cloud and cloud platforms to make it look like it's a single data delivery capability. And that's a major, major issue for organizations that are all, all pretty much have some sort of cloud migration strategy. So we're spending a lot of time further investing and making sure that Donodo is a, is a first class citizen for helping organizations combine cloud and non-cloud data to make it um, ubiquitous and easily accessible across those um, source systems. And then the third is continuing to improve the way we deliver our services through our cloud marketplace offerings. So this is a you know, way to try and con continue to enhance the ubiquitous accessibility of the Donodo platform through you know, the big three cloud providers and make that uh, time to set up and time to consume much more easier and simpler to do that. So almost like a self-service way. That's great to hear there's lots coming up in the pipeline. Mm. And um, just to finish off, can you remind our audience a little bit about how to get in touch with Donodo? 
Sure. So, I mean, look, the, the, the easiest way is to go to denodo.com and then go to contact us and submit your queries through that. And um, we're very good at picking those queries up and then we'll respond to you um, and it will be directed to your to the particular office where you're making that inquiry from. We had one the other day um, and within the same day, we, we were able to reach out and go and see the client. Um, so that's that's the main way. Otherwise, if you do go to denodo.com and, and through contact us, there's phone numbers to go and reach out to the particular office of Donato uh, that you want to go and speak to that's closest to where you are. So I'd say they're, they're the two main and easiest ways to connect. Otherwise, if you go to uh, our LinkedIn and search for Donato, then there's great ways to connect with us through our, our LinkedIn our profile, also on, on other social media platforms. Fantastic. Well, thanks again for joining us today, Ben, and uh, we look forward to hearing more from Donato in the future. Thank you so much, Mitchell. Really great to see you.